السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today we we'll continue our course in resuscitation and today presentation on advanced cardiac life support in adults my name is Ahmed Al Hadidi I am emergency medicine consultant uh, before starting our presentation I would like to say that this presentation and all this resuscitation presentation are not replacement for formal uh, courses for LS or pulse or ATLS uh, this is just an introduction, but in formal courses, there will be a chance for hands-on training and more in deep uh, training for difficult uh, situations. This is the American Heart Association cardiac, uh, ad adult uh, cardiac uh, uh, advanced life support algorithm. Uh, as you can see, a lot of errors and a lot of uh, resume recognition, and we will take it part by part. So first we'll start with uh, starting CPR where uh, a patient is in cardiac arrest and we will start chest compression and 30 to two uh, chest compression and two ventilation. And of course we'll attach monitor or defibrillator if available. Then we'll assess the rhythm. Is the rhythm shockable or non-shockable? Yes, if the rhythm is shockable. What does it mean, shockable? VF or pulseless VTAC. This is ventricular fibrillation, and this is a ventricular tachycardia VTAC, and if there is no associated central pulse, so this is pulseless VTAC. So if the rhythm is shockable, we'll give first DC shock. Then immediately we'll continue CPR, chest compression, and two ventilation for two minutes and we'll insert intravenous line and if not available we'll insert intraosseous line then after two minutes we'll assess the rhythm again is the rhythm shockable or non-shockable if yes shockable we'll give the second dc shock and we'll continue immediately two minutes cbr and we'll give epinephrine start giving epinephrine one milligram epinephrine after the second shock and consider advanced airway and capnography. What, uh, after completing two minutes CPR, we'll give, uh, uh, assess the rhythm again and check if shockable or non shockable. And if yes, still shockable rhythm, we'll give the third DC shock and we'll do two minutes CPR. And while doing two minutes CPR, we'll give a myodrone 300 milligram intravenous and think in reversible causes and treat reversible causes. And after doing two minutes CPR, we'll again assess the rhythm and we'll continue if shockable or non-shockable. And if shockable, we'll continue in the shockable rhythm. If non-shockable, we'll go at any time to non-shockable side of the algorithm. So if non-shockable, we'll go to a non-shockable side of the algorithm. If no signs of return of spontaneous circulation, We'll go for non-shockable rhythm. Uh, we'll see after a minute in next slide what to do. Or if it's non-shockable rhythm, but there is pulse. So this is return of spontaneous circulation and we'll do post cardiac arrest uh, uh, management. What if the patient is in cardiac arrest and we started basic life support and attached the monitor and assess the rhythm? No, it's not shockable rhythm. It's non-shockable, which is asystole or uh, pulseless electrical activity. This is asystole rhythm, and any uh, rhythm with no pulse except asystole, VF, and VTAC is called pulseless electrical activity. So for non-shockable rhythm, we'll do a chest compression for two minutes, uh, uh, 30 to 2 uh, ratio and we'll give epinephrine 1 milligram and continue giving epinephrine every 3 to 5 minutes and consider advanced airway and capnography and after 2 minutes we'll again assess the rhythm if it's still non-shockable we'll continue in non-shockable rhythm and if it's at any time it's shockable we'll go to shockable side of the algorithm so after uh, uh, assessing the rhythm, it's still uh, non-shockable. We'll do again two minutes CPR and three traversable causes. Then assess the rhythm again, it's still non-shockable and no signs of return of spontaneous circulation. We will continue from uh, uh, two minutes CPR or giving adrenaline, either two minutes CPR or giving adrenaline. Every other cycle will give adrenaline uh, 
one milligram intravenous at any time if there is return of spontaneous circulation will start post cardiac arrest okay and at any time if we are assessing the rhythm and there is uh, a shock up rhythm vf or pulses vtac will go back to the shockable side of the rhythm okay during cpr continue uh, uh, high quality cpr like push hard at least two inches five centimeter and push fast one to 100 beat per minute and allow complete chest recoil minimize interruption in compression and avoid excessive ventilation so uh, uh, try to shift the compressors between uh, every two minutes uh, during uh, assessing the rhythm Rotate compressor every two minutes or sooner if fatigued. If no advanced airway, do chest compression 30 to 2 compression to ventilation ratio. Uh, don't forget to use quantitative waveform cabinography if uh, uh, in tidal uh, CO2 is less than 10, milligra 10 milligra uh, millimeter mercury. So this means uh, attempt uh, uh, improve chest compression quality. And try to use intra-arterial uh, blood pressure monitor because uh, if relaxation phase during diastole pressure is less than 20 millimeter mercury, try to improve chest compression. So in tidal CO2 and intra-arterial blood pressure monitoring are indicative for quality of the CBR. Uh, during uh, giving DC shock, so if you are using biphasic uh, uh, defibrillator, use the manufacturer recommendation. Initial dose usually between 120 to 200 joules. If unknown, use the maximum available shock. And always use the second shock and third shock subsequent equivalent or even higher doses uh, may be considered. If using monophasic uh, defibrillator, give 360 joules. Epinephrine, we give epinephrine one milligram intravenous or intraosseous every three to five minutes. In shockable rhythm, we will start after the second shock. In non shockable rhythm, we will start immediately once diagnosed non shockable. In myodorone, we start with 300 milligram intravenous polis uh, uh, of amidorone after the third shock, and we can give second dose 150 milligram after the fifth shock. Uh, intracranial intubation or advanced airway or supraglottic advanced airway, consider using it. Consider using waveform cabinography or cabinometry to confirm and monitor intracranial tube placement. Once advanced airway in place, give one breath every six seconds. Uh, this means uh, uh, 10 breathes per minute with continuous chest compression 100 to 120 per minute. Once there is return of spontaneous circulation confirmed by uh, carotid pulse, measure the pulse rate and blood pressure, and uh, uh, you will find abrupt sustained increase in entitled CO2, more than 40 millimeter mercury, and you will find spontaneous arterial pressure increase if you are using intra-arterial monitoring. Uh, there is reversible causes for cardiac arrest, which are four, five H's and five T, hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion, which is acidosis, hypo and hyperkalemia, hypothermia, and 5T, tension, pneumothorax, tamponade, toxins, thrombosis, pulmonary, and thrombosis, coronary, pulmonary embolism, or myocardial infarction. And we will talk about reversible causes in a separate presentation. So at the end, this is the whole algorithm together again. We will start with basic life support and assess the risk, check if shockable or non-shockable. This is a shockable rhythm, and this is a non-shockable rhythm. And during CBR, we'll monitor CBR continue, uh, quality and uh, uh, give shock once indicated. And drug therapy during uh, uh, cardiac arrest, either epinephrine or amidrone, and advanced airway and cabinography is important. What to do during uh, return of spontaneous circulation, and of course, the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. This is the ACLS, American Heart Association algorithm. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and like our